Namaste and welcome to the second day of DSVV's Global E-Conclave on the sacred occasion of the International Day of Yoga. Yesterday, we facilitated two extremely successful sessions as we heard from a diverse range of leaders, scholars, professors, and policymakers. Today, we explore our theme further in the field of sports. Sport has always been a way for people to come together, no matter how large or small their team is, regardless of whether it's a local community league or the international cricket team. Despite their origins and backgrounds, neighbors, athletes, and community members all rally together in the true spirit of the game. Much of this panel for this session today consists of the architects and multiple talents within the sports industry who understand the power of unity and solidarity. They are players and storytellers who recognize the ability of sports in bringing people together. The founder of the All World Gayatri Parivar, Pandit Sriram Sharma Acharyaji, used to say that it's extremely important to live life as an athlete, one who does not get too elated by victories nor saddened by defeats, but rather maintains a sense of equipoise and focuses on the next task at hand. This type of notion is quite fitting for our theme today because it bears strong correlations with the true essence of yoga. And so with those words, we now will begin with our first esteemed guest speaker for this session. Respected Rudra Pratap Singh Ji, or more commonly known as R.P. Singh Ji. He was an established cricketer who was well known for possessing a unique playing style. And he had a unique bowling action which is known to be rhythmical and beautiful to witness. He is a former Indian cricketer, a member of the Cricket Advisory Committee under the Board of Control of Cricket, BCCI. He has represented India in Test Matches, One Day Internationals and 2020 International Cricket as a left arm, fast to medium pace bowler. He has represented India in the 2007 ICC World 2020 Tournament in South Africa in which he emerged as the second highest wicket taker in the entire tournament. He has played for the Kochi Tuskers in the Indian Premier League, where he again was the highest wicket taker of the entire tournament, and thereby winning the Purple Cap distinction. He was a member of the squad for the 2009 ICC World 2020 Tournament, and he has performed impressively in the Ranji Trophy, where he played for Uttar Pradesh. And so with these words, may we now have the great honor and privilege of inviting our first guest speaker for our session today, the respected R.P. Singh Ji. I am R.P. Singh, Dev Sanskriti Vishwadhyale and parent organization, Akhil Vishwa Gayatri Parivar, who has a very important time to visit this conclave. I want to thank them for this conclave. I want to thank them for this conclave. I want to thank them for this conclave. इस आयोजन में मुझे आमंत्रित किया गया ये मेरे लिए बहुत सम्मान और गर्व की बात है इस सम्मान के लिए मैं डीएसबीवी के प्रो वाइस चैंसलर डॉक्टर चिन्मय पांड्या जी का बहुत आभारी हूँ मुझ जैसे और भी मेरे मित्र जो आपके अपने विचार इस तीन दिन के लिए पावन पावन यात्रा में साझा करना चाहते हैं उनके लिए भी बहुत शुभकामनाएं मेरी तरफ से आप सभी जो इस समय इस प्रोग्राम में साक्षी हैं उनको भी मेरी खूब खूब शुभकामनाएं और मैं आशा करता हूँ कि आप सब सुरक्षित और स्वस्थ होंगे इस विशिष्ट अवसर पर जो विषय है यूनिटी और सॉलिडिटी इन कोविड 19 टाइम्स बड़ा ही महत्वपूर्ण है पूरा विश्व और खासतौर समाज जनरेशन ने ऐसी कभी कोई क्राइसिस देखी नहीं होगी ये बहुत विषम परिस्थिति है हमारे देश के लिए और पूरे विश्व के लिए और इतना आसान नहीं है इस परिस्थिति में अपने आप को संभाले रखना असामान्यता कई कारणों से और मैं कहूँगा कुछ कारणों में सबसे महत्वपूर्ण है जिस गति से विश्व भर में विविध देशों की जनसंख्या में हाहाकार मचा हुआ और और असंख्य परिवार इससे पीड़ित हैं बहुत सारे उपाय भी चल रहे हैं बहुत सारे क्वारंटाइन पीरियड भी चल रहे हैं बहुत सारी चीज़ें तो हो रही हैं और ऐसा कोई ठोस उपाय निकला नहीं लाखों की संख्या में इस रोग के कोप भाजन बने परिवार को कुछ महीने पहले शायद ख्याल भी नहीं आया होगा कि ऐसा कुछ होने वाला है उनके साथ प्रकृति ऐसा उनके साथ खेल करने वाली है प्रकृति ने ऐसा एक कहर बनाया जिससे वो इस कोविड नाइन्टीन से पीड़ित होंगे और पूरी दुनिया हमने देखा चाहे इटली हो चाहे अमेरिका कि कितने सारे लोग मृत हुए हैं और बहुत सारे जिसमें बुजुर्ग काफ़ी हैं बड़ी विडम्बना की बात है कि इतना सब कुछ होने के बाद भी शायद इसका भी कोई 
पूर्ण तरह से कोई इलाज उपलब्ध नहीं है किसी के पास बस जो क्वारंटाइन करना है या अपने आप को सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग मेट करना यही सारी चीजें हैं और हमने देखा बहुत सारे लोग जिन्होंने अपनी जान गवाई और कई केसेस ऐसे भी आए हैं कि जहाँ पर मृत व्यक्ति बिना किसी अपने परिवार वाले के ही बिना डॉक्टरों ने या अन्य लोगों ने उनका ना संस्कार किया या अंतिम यात्रा में शामिल रहे जिनके परिवार उपलब्ध नहीं हो पाए कितने लोग इसमें व्याकिल होंगे कितने लोग इसमें अशांति से जूझ रहे होंगे पर मैं एक चीज कहना चाहूंगा खिलाड़ी के तौर पर यह एक कठिन समय जरूर है लेकिन समय भी कट जाएगा जैसे अच्छा समय आता हो उसके बाद बुरा आता बुरे के बाद भी अच्छा आएगा एक नई उजाला नया प्रकाश होगा दोस्तों ऐसे डिफिकल्ट समय में फ्यूचर को बेहतर तरीके से हम लोग को समझना चाहिए क्या क्या हम कर सकते हैं जिनमें एक लॉकडाउन के लंबे दौर क्राइसिस जैसी परिस्थिति का सामना नहीं करना पड़ा लेकिन सोसाइटी में ऐसे कई लोग हैं जिनके लिए लॉकडाउन का एक एक दिन बहुत ही डिफिकल्ट रहा है लॉकडाउन के बाद भी अब जब हम सामान्य कंडीशन की ओर आगे बढ़ रहे हैं उस समय भी सोसाइटी में का फर्ज बनता है कि वो जो प्रिकॉशन बताए गए हैं उनका पालन करें क्योंकि वही शायद जानकारी है जो प्रिकॉशन है वही सबसे बड़ा बचा है यही बात शायद योग हमें सिखाता है योग कि आप इमेजिन करिए कि आपके हाथ में चोट लगी हो और आपके सिर में दर्द हो क्या हम कोई भी कार्य ठीक तरीके से कर पाते हैं योग का अर्थ यही है मिलना एकत्रित होना योग अपने हर फॉर्म में चाहे किसी रूप में हो हमें यूनाइटी और सोलिटिटी की शिक्षा देता है ऐसा मेरा मानना है और शायद ऐसा मेरे जो आसपास के लोग उनका भी मानना है जैसे हम बॉडी में कहीं पेन होता है और हमें जो भी इफेक्टिव पार्ट होते हैं उस समय उस पेन को बचाने के लिए या कहो उस पेन को दूर करने के लिए आसपास के एरिया थोड़ा स्टिफ कर देते हो जो स्पोर्ट्स उन्होंने देखा कि हाँ कोई इंजरी होने से पहले उसके आसपास के एरिया स्टिफ हो जाता है ताकि आपको थोड़ा सा एक हिंट मिल जाए कि आपको कोई इंजरी होने वाली वैसे इस महामारी में बहुत सारे ऐसे मैं कहूँगा कि सिम्टम्स जो आपको थोड़ा गाइड करते हैं कि आप कहाँ जा रहे हैं जो एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण पार्ट है मेरी दिनचर्या क्योंकि मैं घर पे हूँ और अपना परिवार के साथ समय व्यतीत करने के साथ साथ योगा पर ध्यान देता हूँ कि एटलीस्ट मैं सूर्य नमस्कार कर लूँ दस से बीस बार योगा की स्ट्रेचिंग है तो मुझे लगता है ये काफ़ी कारगर है इस समय में हम लोग प्रतिदिन क्रिकेट की पिच में मेहनत करते हैं लेकिन उस पिच को हमारे लिए तैयार करने वाला हर उस व्यक्ति जो इम्पोर्टेंस है जो डीपली रियलाइज हुई है हम एक पूरी यूनिट साइकिल की तरह पार्ट हैं इस साइकिल को चलाने के लिए हर एक पुर्जे की हर एक पुर्जे की आवश्यकता और सही तरीके से काम करें इस टाइम पर हम सबको इस देश और दुनिया को हर पार्ट को ठीक तरीके से काम करने की आवश्यकता और ठीक रहने की भी आवश्यकता है तो मुझे यह पूरा यकीन है कि अखिल विश्व गायत्री परिवार और देव संस्कृति विश्वविद्यालय समाज सेवा योग और आध्यात्म के माध्यम से इस ट्रांजिशन के टाइम को बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट तरीके से काम इस क्राइसिस टाइम बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट तरीके से काम कर रहा है और सबको शिक्षित भी कर रहा है क्योंकि योगा आप घर में हैं आप जा नहीं सकते घर के बाहर जिम इतना उपलब्ध नहीं रहता आपके पास सो so, घर पे बैठ के आप योगा आराम से कर सकते हैं और यही शायद पार्ट हमारा जो अखिल भारतीय गायत्री परिवार और देव संस्कृत विद्यालय पढ़ाने की कोशिश कर रहा है कि कितना महत्वपूर्ण हमारी दिनचर्या में हम सबको इसको अपने एक दिनचर्या का पार्ट बनाना चाहिए मैंने बनाया और योगा में आप बहुत सारी चीजें हैं आपकी स्ट्रेचिंग है स्ट्रेंथिंग है प्लस आपका मेडिटेशन भी है जो भी आपको हर क्षेत्र में आगे बढ़ने में सहायता करता है क्योंकि मैं पर्सनली मानता हूं कि मैं ज्यादा फ्री वेट एक्सरसाइज का ही हमेशा फैन रहा हूं शौकीन रहा हूं उतना वेट लिफ्ट करने में बिलीव नहीं रखता हूँ तो ऐसे लोगों के लिए योगा तो बहुत ही आवश्यक है और योगा में आप बॉडी वेट लिफ्ट करते हैं वो भी अपने आप में एक बड़ा वेट है अपने आप लिफ्ट करने के लिए अंत में आप सभी से बहुत शुभकामनाएं देता हूं कि आप सब ने मुझे इतना ध्यान से सुना और इसके लिए मैं आप सभी को बहुत बहुत आभार भी व्यक्त करना चाहता हूं आशा करता हूं कि इस इंटरनेशनल योगा डे पर आप सब अपने परिवार के साथ स्वस्थ रहेंगे और जल्द स्वस्थ रहेंगे और सभी योगा करेंगे भी मैं जल्द हरिद्वार आने का प्रयास करूँगा माननीय डॉक्टर छिन्मय पांडे जी को धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ कि इस के साथ अन्य सभी डिग्नेटरीज को मेरी तरफ से नमस्कार बोल दें क्योंकि मैं उनको देख नहीं पा रहा लेकिन हाँ मैंने जो बैनर और पोस्टर में देखा है कि सब अपने अपने फील्ड के बहुत बहुत गणमान व्यक्ति हैं मैं आशा करूँगा उनसे भी कभी भविष्य मिलूंगा उनसे भी काफ़ी कुछ सीखूंगा और बस इसी के साथ मैं अपना ये अंत कर अपनी ये स्पीच अंत करता हूँ कि आप योगा पर ध्यान दें घर पर रहें और सुरक्षित रहें खूब सारा योगा करें खूब सारा गर्म पानी पिए और
मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा आके यहाँ पर मुझे मुझे अपनी बातें कहने का जो मौका मिला उसके लिए सभी का धन्यवाद जय हिंद जल्दी मुलाकात होगी Thank you so much respected RP Singh ji for your valued perspectives on the current times. Moving along, when we think of the world of sports, we often focus our attention to our favorite players, coaches, or perhaps teams. However, this vast domain brings together numerous eclectic talents from various other associated fields. One such vital field is that of sports journalism and policy. And our second guest speaker for today, respected Dr. Boria Majumdar ji, joins us from this exact field. He is a reputed senior sports journalist, the consulting editor of the India Today group. He's authored the autobiography of the great cricket legend Sachin Tendulkar called Playing It My Way. He's a co-founder of Fanatic Sports Museum in Kolkata. He's an adjunct professor at the Monash University in Australia, a member of the Sports Authority of India, a member of the committee to draft the Indian National Sports Bill in 2013. He's an editor of South Asia Archive, which is a fully new searchable and digital archive that provides documents from the mid 18th century to the 20th century. He's the principal trustee of South Asia Research Foundation. He has taught in universities in Toronto and also at Cambridge in the UK. He's a columnist with the Times of India and he's also a host of Star Sports Bangla. And with that, we would now like to invite Dr. Majumdar for his important message on the current theme of unity and solidarity. part of this and i'm uh, thankful to dr chinmay pandya uh, who recognized yoga expert worldwide recognized yoga expert on this particular day which is very special and uh, for putting this together the pro vice chancellor of dev sanskriti university you're doing a great job keep doing it because as we have seen naturopathy yoga all of this can contribute and increase immunity and help in this fight against covid-19 so more strength to you dr pandya and anything that i can do to try and strengthen your hand to try and help you out any point in time you know i'm a call away all the very best more strength to you stay healthy stay safe the subject you guys are tackling today national unity uh, global unity and solidarity extremely important if you listen to every who briefing over the last almost 6 months now from january onwards and i've been an avid listener uh, as an informed observer Uh, every time the who secretary general has spoken about the covid crisis he has used these words national unity and global solidarity now i am not a health expert nor do i want to go down that terrain but if i if i can extrapolate that data and apply it to global sport i think these same watchwords national unity and global solidarity remain extremely essential for us to take global sport forward now what do i mean i mean this take the take the case of cricket and i will do a case study with uh, with you all as far as cricket is concerned now for the first time in living memory all kind of sport came to a standstill i have in my 44 years of existence never seen a situation like this and nor do i think i will ever see this even during the second world war there was sport in some parts of the world but here every kind of sport had come to a standstill finally sport is starting now what is what is happening as far as world cricket is concerned now this is very interesting there are multiple scenarios in front of us one uh, the indian premier league which is a massive tournament in india can be staged in september october if the world t20 which is the icc organized t20 world cup is pushed back now there is a possibility that that will happen there is a possibility that that might not happen now the broadcaster remains the same which is star sports followed by the ipl or the global t20 india is supposed to undertake a tour of australia which is for the bilateral india australia series where cricket australia needs to or or will make 300 million dollars that is the kind of money that cricket australia will make for this particular series now here's my suggestion if the icc world t20 is pushed back to 2022 why am i saying this i am saying this for multiple reasons one if the tournament is pushed back to 2022 australia does not lose the money for staging the tournament the tournament will still be held 
That way, they will be able to earn exactly the same amount of money that they would have earned. In turn, BCCI will be able to stage the IPL in that particular window. Whether they are able to stage it in India or whether they take the tournament to Sri Lanka, which is emerging as a likely alternative, now that is a news point, is for later. Sri Lanka, why? Because they have, you know, in one city, Colombo, they have multiple grounds. They have great hotels. The time zone is the same. The exchange rate between India and Sri Lanka is in favor of India. And finally, the quarantine rules as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, st stipulates only one day quarantine from August 1. So in every sense, Sri Lanka can emerge as a likely alternative. Now, what does that do for world cricket? One, it will enable star sports to earn significant amount of revenue because it is star sports as the broadcaster that will plow that money back into world cricket, whether it is for the world T20 or for the IPL. Two, the BCCI stands to gain about 4,000 crore rupees uh, from staging the IPL. 3,300 crores from television rights, 600 crores from the title sponsorship rights. That will mean that every cricket board of the world will earn significant amounts of money. It will mean cricketers will earn money. Will earn money. It will mean there will be a significant injection of positivity in a country like India, which has, which has been ravaged by the COVID-19 crisis. It will also send a signal if the tournament is held around September, October, that there is a semblance of positivity in India, which is around the festival time. In Calcutta, it will be Durga Puja. In the rest of the country, it will be Diwali and Navratri. So there will be a significant you know, in terms of uh, positivity, injection of positivity in the country. Now, if that can be done, what am I talking about? I'm talking about Australia giving up their rights to stage the World T21 for logistical reasons because you don't want too many people to come to India, uh, to come to Australia. Second, by doing that, they're actually facilitating the holding of the IPL, a significant show of global solidarity. What is India doing in return? India is going to Australia for a bilateral tour, which will enable Cricket Australia to earn 300 million which is close to 1,600 crores. Now, you are hand-holding each other. How is the ICC benefiting? The ICC as global cricket's arbiter is no longer losing on a World Cup. The World Cup is only being pushed back. So the broadcast revenue remains the same. In 2021, there is a World Cup in India. In 2022, there is a World Cup in Australia. In 2023, there is a World Cup in India, which means cricket's finances remain stable. By doing this, by by getting into this, by getting into this, uh, uh, we are doing technology, so pardon us. What we are doing is by, by allowing for such collaboration, global collaboration, national unity and global solidarity are the watchwords. We are actually saving the world game and the economics of the world game from ruin. And it is the same as far as world football is concerned. If you see what is happening with the German Bundesliga, with the Italian Serie A, with the English Premier League, which is starting on the 17th of June. We have already seen the Bundesliga and the, and the Spanish La Liga start. West Indies, by going to England, undergoing quarantine, and as, as the West Indian captain Jason Holder is already on record, they're not guinea pigs. They have done to embrace the new normal. They have done this to try and sacrifice to a degree to ensure that global cricket can start again. Every country will have to embrace the new normal and get back into some form of normality as soon as possible. And I've given you the formula as far as cricket is concerned. And here, where are the fans? Now, I have some radical theories. What can the broadcaster do? How can we show national unity and global solidarity here? Now, here's what I am suggesting. When you and I talk about a stadium, all we do, and a stadium is at one level, a very introverted idea. A stadium is at one level, a closed door idea. What you do is put 30,000 people inside a stadium, put in about 25 cameras and you broadcast. But Rigu sitting in, in, in Mumbai or Boria sitting in Delhi or X sitting in Calcutta is actually left out of the ambit of that broadcast. What am I trying to tell you? I'm telling you this. Hear me. India versus Pakistan playing in Birmingham. All you are doing, some people who can afford tickets, land up there. People who are inside the stadium is within the ambit of broadcast. What is happening in Karachi or Lahore or what is happening in Mumbai or Delhi or Calcutta or any other Indian city 
is left out of the ambit of broadcast. What am I suggesting? I am saying real time, the broadcaster, Star Sports, using technology, using the tropes of national unity and global solidarity can completely transform fandom. Real time, you and I can tweet videos. Once you and I can tweet videos, for example, a Pakistani wicket falls. What is the celebration like in Mumbai? What is the celebration like in Calcutta? You put that video and the broadcaster then extrapolates that video and interjects it or, or inserts it within the live coverage. By doing that, you are empowering the fan from different parts of the world, bringing the world of fandom and sports closer. So when, does, when sport does come back after a vaccine or after a therapy, you have already expanded the ambit of sport to different parts of the world, democratize spectatorship in a manner that has not been done before. Take it one step forward. What you can do, take the IPL. What the player needs to do when the player is coming back to field at the boundary, he is seeing a huge LED wall. Now that LED wall can be connected with technology using Zoom or some other form of technology and fans can join in real time. Now, if that can be done, you and I are actually watching the live action on TV and waving to our favorite cricketer who's coming to field in the boundary. So he's making eye contact with me real time. So even if I'm not there, and by doing this, a fan from the Caribbean watching Andre Russell, a fan from Australia watching Andre Russell, a fan from India watching Andre Russell can join in at the same time in a rare show of national unity and global solidarity which will take fandom in sport to a very different level. I think that is what using technology, the world of sport needs to do now. We need to think radically. We need to think how we can use this opportunity and use technology to overcome this pandemic. Let me tell you, at no point in time has a pandemic been able to defeat human civilization. And even COVID-19 will not be able to do so. But in order to achieve that, we have to be innovative. We have to use technology. We have to use other opportunities that we have in front of us, come together in a manner that we have not done before. If we are able to do that, and this, by the way, can be applied to the Tokyo 2021 games, 2020 in, in 2021 games as well. Now, what am I suggesting there? My final point before I let you all go. I'm saying that Tokyo 2020 has a huge economic cost, close to about 35, 36 billion dollars. Japan's economy is riding on it. It'll be a human festival of unprecedented proportion which will bring the globe together. So what I'm telling you is, if the vaccine comes and there is every reason to believe there is some form of therapy or vaccine that will come in the first quarter of 2021 or by the latter part of this year, that's what every clinical trial of every vaccine, whether it is Oxford and AstraZeneca, whether it is Moderna, whether it is any vaccine that Sinopharm or, or the Chinese vaccines, Every vaccine that has progressed into the clinical trial stage gives us hope. And we think there will be some form of intervention by the end of the year or early next year. That is the case. Here's what I'm suggesting. I'm saying the WHO and the International Olympic Committee should come together. Anyone who is a Tokyo stakeholder, Vrigu, if he's a media person, Boria, if he's an athlete, if someone who is going there as a fan from any part of the world, and here we are talking about what? 29,000 media, 10,000 athletes, and maybe 200,000 fans. So we are talking about a total cluster of 250,000 people. Now this 250,000 people can make it a human celebration of unprecedented proportion, which will be a show of national unity and global solidarity. I am saying treat them as frontline workers. Everyone who is a Tokyo stakeholder should be treated as a frontline worker based on an understanding between the WHO and the International Olympic Committee. And if you are a Tokyo stakeholder, and you show that to your, your country's healthcare systems, you have an access to that, to that vaccine or the jab, whichever jab that is, because that will be your immunity passport to travel to Tokyo. If the globe comes together in a manner that has never been done before, you can save this human festival. And by doing so, you are actually giving sport a new lease of life. And you have also taken sport to a different level. What you've done is you've saved the Japanese economy. You have saved 35, 36, 37 billion dollars. You have added so much strength to the Olympic movement. These are radical propositions and I'm aware of that. There will be debate, there will be criticism. That is what the intention is of a forum like this. You guys, that is what, that is what the intention is of a forum like this. You guys take this discussion to a different level. I've left you with some food for thought. 
hopefully you find them interesting and you find them worth debating. Thank you very much once again for having me. Thank you so much, Dr. Majumdarji, for your words of wisdom. I'm quite sure that all of our participants will benefit from the thoughts that you have just shared and also will be inspired from the diverse sets of passions that you carry. Moving along, we just learned from two dynamic young leaders and we now transition to our next panelist, who brings with him a vast array of literary expertise and sporting knowledge. This is indeed evidenced by his various accomplishments, which are, he's a veteran journalist and author, he's a sports journalist and editor for writing for the Hindu and the Sports Star since 1986, he's among the few in India who have sent dispatches from every venue of the cricketing world, he has the distinction of covering the World Cup in 1987 and later reported on the editions in 1996, 1999, 2003, and 2011. He's a prolific author of books such as History of Indian Badminton, Driven, the Virat Kohli story, the Virendra Sevag story, the Hitman, and World Cup Warriors to name a few. So we now humbly request respected Mr. Vijay Lokapali ji to present his views and interpretations of how unity and solidarity can pave the way forward. Namaskar. Uh, it's a wonderful topic to discuss, embracing unity and solidarity in COVID times. Uh, these are very difficult times. We all know that. We, are, we, are, we have all been going through it. But I think we have to make the most of it. It is, it is a situation uh, unprecedented. Uh, we have never had a, a, a phase where we've all been locked inside. Uh, but yet, we have find, found wonderful ways to connect with the outside world, to come to each other's help. Uh, when, when we look back uh, on the last couple of months, how people have stood for each other, how they have reached out to help the poor, especially uh, during the migrant crisis, uh, we, we, we saw how uh, people from all walks of life, they, they came and stood together to reach out uh, to these poor people. Uh, some, some of them, uh, I mean, it was so touching. They would, they would reach out with food packets and, and ensure that some of these who were ailing were taken to the hospitals. And there were all kinds of volunteers from all walks of life, especially the younger generation. I must admire their spirit. It has been difficult, uh, no doubt, but we have we have learned so much uh, during this crisis. The f most important is to stand for each other. We have come to realize the importance of our close and dear ones because we are locked with them inside the house. We have discovered new ways of reaching out to our friends, remembering the good old times, and also trying to overcome depressing periods with, with long sessions of counseling. Uh, you don't need experts to deal with such situations. A friend talking to a friend can be a big help. Uh, like I have discovered in my case, uh, I was feeling very morose, sitting at home, uh, uh, realize, understanding it was very, very, tough, very tough to accept the fact that I can't step out. But then I had so many friends who would call up share their experience of the day and want to know i mean they would love to uh, they would try to uh, make me understand that it is that we are all we, we are in together we are all all in it together and we have to fight we have to fight this difficult and, and dreadful virus by staying together it, which even if it means uh, social distancing yes Social distancing doesn't mean that we can't uh, speak to each other. We can from a distance. We should also remember the fact that it is for our own benefit, for the benefit of man mankind, that if it requires for us to stay away from each other for some phase, a particular phase, because this will, I'm sure it will go away. We will we'll be able to conquer this COVID-19. But if it is a phase which requires us to stay at home, requires us to, to avoid uh, public contact, so be it. Because 
we can look forward to the time when we would all be coming out of our homes, uh, interacting with each other, each other, kids, students going to schools, students going to colleges, people going to their workplaces, and there will be such enthusiasm whenever that happens. Uh, if it is, it has been brought upon us that this virus has to be dealt with from and has to be fought from within the confines of the house. We have to understand, we have to stand with each other and there has been uh, uh, amazing unity. I mean, if, if you notice how the, especially the health workers, I mean, they have been united uh, uh, on their front uh, in, in, in serving mankind at the cost of uh, uh, their own lives. Uh, hats off to the health workers, hats off to the police force uh, who have been out on the streets, on the roads trying to ensure there is law and order, trying to ensure there is no uh, uh, public uh, uh, gathering which can harm. But essentially, I think the responsibility lies upon individual citizens. We must, we must accept the fact that by we can contribute, we can contribute to the nation's cause by simply adhering to the, the the instructions from the authorities if they want us to uh, stay inside the house we should stay inside the house because we have we must understand that uh, 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 we cannot be flooding uh, the hospital beds and creating uh, such uh, such uh, creating adding to the problems of the health workers uh, we, we are short staff uh, as far as the doctors are concerned nurses are concerned but they are overworked some of them have been working 18 to 20 hours a day and hats off to these people. Uh, without them, where would we be? Uh, so these are the times when we have come to realize that how people have stood for each other. Uh, we have, uh, people have forgotten the religion, uh, the, 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 their own religion because uh, you have to rise above all these things. It doesn't matter which religion you belong to. Today, uh, we are, this threat is, uh, the mankind faces this threat which has come which can come in any form and, and, and destroy your life. So every life is very crucial. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have been fortunate uh, to have uh, leaders. Uh, we, have, we are fortunate to have health workers. We are fortunate to have the police force and administrators who are engaged night and day in trying to help us, in trying to reach out to the poor, in trying to reach out to the needy. And to, tomorrow, whenever the world recovers, it will be our responsibility to, 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 to strengthen the hands of the government because there will be humongous issues in front of us. Economy has been uh, hit badly. They, we, the people have lost their jobs. So we will have to create jobs. We will have to make sacrifices. We will have to accommodate uh, the younger generation because they have to take the nation forward. We have to stand by the young people. I mean, we, we must ensure uh, that they, 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 we, there are jobs for them. We must ensure they are not depressed we must ensure that they get the best of education whenever they return to the schools and colleges it is our responsibility it is it responsibility of the people who are in power to to make it easy for the students to make it easy uh, for for the whole for the whole uh, uh, the, the younger generation especially uh, for them to reach out and and, and find uh, these uh, jobs to, to keep their to keep their uh, uh, life going and uh, i think uh, it is a test the severe test for us and we can only pass it by staying together uh, we have we have done it in the past also we will do it in the future also but for the present uh, it is it is imperative that we understand why it is important to stay together and fight this uh, covid and uh, with the united force there is uh, we all know there is no vaccine for this uh, coming up but I'm sure uh, with, with the efforts of uh, the best of experts from the medical field, we, there will be a vaccine sometime in future and then the world will be as good and as beautiful as it was. And which also makes us realize today that we must now take lessons uh, uh, from, from, from the time we have spent in the last few months that uh, we have to cut down the rat race. We have to understand that you can't have everything in life. We have to understand what is needed and not you what not the what not you want. There will be so many things. You don't need five vehicles in the in the in the house. You can you can need just one. And you also don't have to 
uh, 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 sort of put pressure on the authorities uh, uh, by 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 with their in, with, with some irre irresponsible acts it is it is uh, uh, time for for us for us indians to accept the fact that we have to be together and take the nation forward and uh, on the on the on the occasion of the international yoga day i must say that our country has had a rich history has had a rich tradition of uh, fighting these issues and what best uh, uh, than the fact that we have given the world yoga it it helps you overcome uh, your anxieties it helps you become a very strong person it helps you control your mind and if you have a strong mind i'm sure you can have a strong body so uh, with with our with our gurus who have in the past uh, 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 told us how to live peacefully how to live happily i think we are we are blessed to have had such a rich tradition in our country and, uh, uh, and there are uh, uh, gurus today uh, who are guiding us we should we should follow their ideals we should follow their advice and uh, and, 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 and and understand that yoga uh, will help you stay strong yoga will take you forward uh, with a very peaceful mind uh, so on this occasion uh, i will conclude my uh, i am not an expert on this subject i have tried to make an effort to to reach out to you and up with an appeal that we must stay united we must stay also we must make an effort to stay happy uh, with whatever we have at present and look forward to a very bright to a very healthy and a very happy india in the times to come Namaskar and have a good day. We're extremely grateful to respected Mr. Vijay Lokapali ji for his precious insights. There's so much to learn from his years of experience and aptitude of studying the sport that is cherished by millions at large. I'm sure that if we can extract the intangible qualities and transferable skills which he possesses, then we can create meaningful change. in our respective areas of influence. In continuation with our agenda, we now return to the cricket pitch as we welcome our second cricketer, respected Miss Veda Krishnamurthy ji. She is currently an active cricketer for the Indian national cricket team and is known to be a batting maestro who bats at the fourth order. She is an Indian woman cricketer. who debuted at the age of 18 in one day international cricket in 2011 she was signed by the hobart hurricanes for the 2017 2018 women's big bash league season she is icc's women's world cup runner up in 2017 she played and contributed to help india reach the world cup finals in 2017 and she's been presented with the Vijaya Karnataka Sports Person of the Year award in 2017. In 2018, she became the youngest player for the Indian women cricket team to score 1000 runs in one day internationals. And she's she's named in India squad for the 2020 ICC Women's T20 World Cup which will be held in Australia. And so without further ado please join me in welcoming Miss Veda Krishnamurthy ji to share her thoughts and learnings. Hello everyone I hope you all are well and safe. Today I feel honored to be sharing this platform with many global leaders sports persons etc. I'd like to thank Dr Chinmay Pandey ji for inviting me here who also represented the government of India to the UN to get yoga enlisted in the intangible world heritage list today truly everybody are benefiting from the practice of yoga the international day of yoga has come with the scare of the corona virus the interesting and practical part is that through yogic practices you can help your body fight the corona virus today in this difficult time for humanity we must stay united and be sympathetic to all the problems the global community is facing This is not the time to be selfish and look away from the pains of our brothers and sisters. We must try to do our bit to provide them relief. Let's show solidarity to fight this pandemic and pledge to inculcate healthy lifestyle for our own safety and better future. Best wishes, Veda Krishnamurthy. 
Thank you so much, Ms. Krishnamurti Ji, for conveying your message to all of us today. We now swiftly forge ahead as we have an esteemed lineup of guest speakers who we wish to learn from. Our next guest speaker is also a distinguished female cricketer. She specializes in the T20 format of cricket, which is known for its intensity. She has represented the, na the national team at various stages and platforms, and she is currently an active Indian professional cricketer. She made her international T20 cricket debut in 2012, where the Indian women's team played against the English team. She's represented the Indian team in the 2012 and 2016 Women's World Cups, which were organized in Sri Lanka and in India, respectively. She was named in India's squad for the 2018 ICC Women's World 2020 Tournament, which was held in the West Indies. And so with those words, we now pass it along to respected Ms. Anuja Patilji to hear her thoughts on unity and solidarity. हेलो एवरीबॉडी आज हम एक इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक पर चर्चा करें और वो भी एक डिफिकल्ट टाइम में आज हमारी सबकी लाइफ में चैलेंजेस है फाइनेंस से रिलेटेड हेल्थ रिलेटेड खुशी से रिलेटेड देव संस्कृति यूनिवर्सिटी और डॉक्टर चिन्मय पांडे जी को ऑर्गेनाइज करने के लिए मैं बधाई देती हूँ यूनिटी और सोलिडिटी की आज से पहले कभी इतनी ज़्यादा जरूरत नहीं थी इस साल हमने कई अनफर्गेटेबल इवेंट्स देखे जिनसे काफ़ी दुख हुआ कोरोना वायरस ने लाइफ को बदल दिया है ऐसे में वी मस्ट स्टैंड टुगेदर सोसाइटी के लिए हमें जितना हो सके उतना करना ही चाहिए मैंने अपने कुछ फ्रेंड्स के साथ ग्राउंड्समैन के लिए डोनेशन अपील की क्योंकि वो लोग पूरी तरह क्रिकेट पर डिपेंड करते हैं ऐसे ही हमें छोटे या बड़े इनिशिएटिव लेते रहना चाहिए इस कॉन्क्लेव के सभी अपने फील्ड के एक्सपर्ट्स और चैम्पियंस को मेरी ग्रीटिंग्स थैंक यू वेरी मच स्टे सेफ Thank you respected Anuja Patil ji for sharing your valued insights and we can certainly learn to build resilience from observing your journey to success. Friends and viewers from around the globe, what better sport than cricket to create unity and solidarity not only in India but across the globe. In cricket like any other sport, talent and grit are equally important to be successful. Our next speaker, Mr. Unmukta Chan, is a cricketer who has encapsulated his journey in his biopic, The Sky is the Limit. He embodied these qualities, but what really propelled him forward is his courage to dare. Mr. Unmukta Chan, a young cricketer who dared to create history, the youngest player to have played in the IPL for Delhi Daredevils at the age of 17. He guided the team to success in Under-19 Asia Cup. U19 Cricket World Cup winning captain for India. He's going to take captaincy of Uttarakhand from Rajat Bhatia for the domestic season of 2019 to 2020. He's the Kestrel Junior Cricketer of the Year for 2011 to 2012. He's a CEAT Indian Youngster of the Year 2012 and wrecked the Cambridge International Summer Schools for Faith Leaders from Conflict Zones. Please welcome him to share a few words. नमस्कार आदरणीय डॉक्टर चिन्मय पांडे जी डीएसवी के सभी प्रोफेसर्स टीचर्स स्टाफ को मेरा प्रणाम और डीएसवी के सभी छात्रों को मेरा प्यार थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी हेयर एट द ग्लोबल ई कॉन्क्लेव ऑफ फॉर द इंटरनेशनल योगा डे आई होप दैट एवरी वन ऑफ यू आर आर सेफ एंड हेल्दी एंड इन अ गुड स्पेस राइट नाउ Uh, I think this good space is very important because we all know uh, that uh, things are not going so well outside and uh, uh, you know we've been constantly hearing so much of news about this virus uh, and uh, the casualties it has been causing uh, to people who are affected by it and also to those who are not affected by it but are uh, having a lot of problems at homes. काफी सारी job losses हुई हैं काफी सारे करियर्स uh, में स्टॉप आ गया है गैप आ गया है और जो कि uh, बहुत ज़्यादा एंगजाइटी डिप्रेशन क्रिएट कर रहा है uh, चारों तरफ सो आई रियली होप यू आर नॉट अ विक्टिम ऑफ दिस एंड इवन इवन इफ इट हिट्स यू आई थिंक यू नो वी ऑल हैव गॉट वेज टू डील विद इट 
I think it's it's, it's a tough time honestly for everyone for me as well uh, uh, you being students and others you know like me being a cricketer sportsman or any other field we all know that things are sold and it really causes some sort of anxiety ki aage kya hoga kaise hoga kab hoga so in in cheezon ka jawab to abhi filhal kisi ke paas nahi hai lekin hum jitna jitna ho sake agar hum uh, is present moment pe rahe jiye to definitely uh, hum is is cheez se uh, aage badh payenge aur uh, अपना ख्याल रख पाएंगे एट द सेम टाइम इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू नो वी फॉर्म रूटीन्स वी फॉर्म यू नो वेज ऑफ लर्निंग न्यू थिंग्स एवरी डे बिकॉज दैट इज समथिंग विच इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ योगा इज इज ट्रेमेंडस वी ऑल नो दैट वी ऑल कीप हेयरिंग अबाउट दैट नॉट ओनली जस्ट ऑन द बॉडी बट द माइंड एंड माइंड एंड यू नो हार्ट एंड द स्पिरिचुअल रीम्स i think it's it's something which is very very important especially during these times because uh if we take care of our bodies then definitely we 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 if we feel good staying fit is so important these days because uh you know it it releases those hormones in the brain which which makes you uh take better decisions uh stay in a good space stay lively Uh, stay disease free so definitely uh, it's it's very important uh, on the mental aspect 100% i think meditations are something which are so important these days because uh, has been forever but especially these days uh, because they help you with uh, clarity i think this is the most important thing right now because all of us most of us are are losing on clarity most of us are uh, you know losing on the present moment awareness because we are all thinking about the past or the future and uh, you know f- forming too many opinions biases which which eventually don't help so yes when you when you meditate uh, you you make you train your mind to stay in the present moment there is more clarity there is um, you know you, the doubts fade away with with, with time and that is uh, what keeps you in a good space so uh, it's it's so important uh, to be doing these things and we all know the benefits of yoga i mean uh, in terms of immunity building the only people who are you know falling prey to these diseases are the ones who whose immunity is not so good and uh, uh, i don't know whether this will end soon or not but uh, i think uh, it's it's really important that we build upon our immunities and that can be only done through uh, through yoga which again has different body postures meditations breathing i think breathing is so important uh, these days because um, uh, i think we have forgotten how to breathe first of all secondly uh, various breathing uh, techniques like uh, pranayam and uh, which pranayam ke andar kafi sari cheeze include hoti hain uh, jab hum ye sab cheeze karte hain to hum apne apni body ki immunity badhate hain uh, aur uh, i think this is the most important thing right now to 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 fight this disease Uh, और जितना हम लोग ये सब चीज़ें करते हैं वो इतनी हम लोग एक गुड स्पेस में रहते हैं बिकॉज वी नीड दैट गुड स्पेस टू फंक्शन वेल एंड एंड वर्क ऑन आसल्स आई थिंक आई थिंक यू नो मी बीइंग अ स्पोर्ट्समैन आई आई हैव यू नो ट्रेंड फॉर माय रूटीन व्हिच इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दीज डेज बिकॉज यू नो लैक ऑफ रूटीन कैन रियली मेक मी गो हे वायर एट टाइम्स सो आई आई ट्राई एंड फॉर्म अ रूटीन एंड स्टिक टू इट विच कीप्स मी ऑन ट्रैक विच makes me look at things with a purpose my purpose does not go away and uh, i think as humans we all need a purpose in life and if we can find that purpose and work on it i think it's the best thing we can do to ourselves so so yes uh, this is very important part of 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 for any person for uh, in any field and uh, i i really hope that uh, you know you all take care of yourselves by first working on ourselves i think that's the most important and the basic thing which we can do uh, especially these times it's, it's good that at least we got time to now and to you know uh, focus on our uh, well being uh, eating well sleeping well um, meditating working on ourselves uh, on a physical front as well so i think these things are very important and i, I really hope that uh, Every one of you, uh, you know, listening to this, uh, uh, 
you know is um, starts working on 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 themselves and uh, uh, i'm sure that you know we can we can uh, win this um, delhi virus by by being together in it and the most important thing i think it's it's written behind me it's a quote by dr by pandit uh, shri ram sharma acharya ji and which says uh, realize your worth and believe that you are the most important person in the world अपना मूल्य या समझो और विश्वास करो कि तुम संसार के सबसे महत्वपूर्ण व्यक्ति हो इट्स सो एप्ट बिकॉज यू नो इफ यू फील दैट यू द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पर्सन देन यू विल वर्क ऑन योर सेल्फ यू विल इन्वेस्ट टाइम ऑन योर सेल्फ यू विल इन्वेस्ट एनर्जी मनी एवरी थिंग ऑन योर सेल्फ विच इवेंचुअली विल मेक यू अ बेटर पर्सन एंड इफ यू आर अ बेटर पर्सन यू विल बी मोर रिस्पॉन्सिबल टूवर्ड योर सेल्फ एंड टूवर्ड योर सोसाइटी टू सो प्लीज uh you know find time to 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 work on yourself to learn new things to work on aspects which were before uh, ignored and uh, by this we can move forward i think it's uh, the blessing in disguise is that you know you know uh, this has got the whole world together uh, i don't think there is any other uh, the world has stopped like this before like this uh, you know i i don't think so and this is the first time that the whole world is infected by this and uh, it has definitely got us together and especially with this global conclave as well we are all uh, together in this and uh, i really hope that we join hands uh, and uh, the best thing we can do right now is is stay healthy stay fresh stay good stay in a good space and uh, i think nothing better than yoga to uh, you know get you to to accomplish all accomplish all these things so again uh, thanks for having me here and i really sincerely hope that things get well soon and um, uh, it's it's a pleasure to again speak to all of you uh, i i'll try and come back to dsvv uh, whenever this gets over it was a very uh, pleasant feeling to be there at the campus um, some time back and i really wish to come back again but till then uh, take care be good stay safe and uh, एंड अपना ख्याल रखिए अपने परिवार का ख्याल रखिए जय हिंद थैंक यू थैंक यू रिस्पेक्टेड उन्मुक्त चंद जी फॉर इनविगरेटिंग अस इन दी द स्काई इज द लिमिट ऑडियंस मेंबर्स थैंक यू फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन विद अस टुडे द वर्ल्ड ऑफ स्पोर्ट्स कंटीन्यूअसली इंस्पायर्स अस विद स्टोरीज ऑफ ह्यूमन कैपेसिटी टू राइज एंड अचीव अगेंस्ट ऑल ऑड्स एंड एडवर्सिटीज थ्रू शेयर डिटरमिनेशन एंड ग्रिट While it requires extreme discipline and hard work to master one sport. Our next speaker, Ms. Mona Mishram ji, has excelled in two sports with great finesse. Ms. Mona Mishram, Indian professional cricketer and former national level volleyball player. The first woman cricketer from Hyderabad to represent India, part of the Indian team to reach the 2017 Women's Cricket World Cup final at Lords. recipient of BCCI's MA Chidambaram award for being the best junior lady cricketer of 2010 to 2011 season and runner up at the ICC Women's World Cup of 2017 please welcome miss mishram hello everyone i am glad to be a part of this big event the e conclave on unity and solidarity in this covid-19 times we as a sports person have faced several issues in this pandemic like hum bahar nahi ja sakte hum practice nahi kar sakte hum training nahi kar sakte gym nahi kar sakte aur isi wajah se uh, anxiety level aur stress level badh jata hai so this is the time where we have to prepare ourselves लाइक like, हम प्लेयर्स जैसे प्रेशर सिचुएशन में अच्छा परफॉर्म करते हैं वैसे ही हमें ये डिफ़िकल्ट टाइम में एक दूसरे को मोटिवेट करना है और पॉजिटिव रह के आगे बढ़ना है यूनिटी एंड सॉलिडेरिटी के साथ ही हमें इस टाइम पर योग प्रैक्टिस करने की बहुत ज़रूरत है ट्रस्ट मी इट्स अ रियली गुड सोल्यूशन टू सो मैनी फिजिकल एंड मेंटल प्रॉब्लम्स दैट वी हैव on this international day of yoga let's pledge to be together and fight this care of corona virus stay safe and be happy there's lot more to this life i must say that dev sanskriti university has taken a theme which seems really important in this pandemic times 
I thank their pro vice chancellor honorable Dr Chinmay Pandey ji for having me here to talk about this topic Thank you respected Mona Mishram ji for encouraging us to pivot and pursue our passions to everyone tuning in right now in today's session we have the privilege of hearing many sports personalities that share their experiences and perspectives any sport person is not successful by sheer talent alone the talent has to be combined with great focus determination and persistence The next speaker to join us is Miss Rima Malhotra. She is the former female cricketer, the cricket commentator. She is exploring the world of broadcasting with Cricketers Show. She has played in 41 women's one day internationals, 22 2020 internationals and one test for India. She is the best all-rounder in the national tournament of 2005 and earned her place when facing Australia and New Zealand at the start of 2006. Lastly, she is the captain of Delhi Ranji team. Please welcome her to share a few words. Namaskar. A very good day to all of you. COVID-19 aur ye saal hum sab ke liye bahut unpredictable challenges lekar aa raha hai aur aise time mein ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर चिन्मय पांड्या जी और उनकी यूनिवर्सिटी ने ये कॉन्क्लेव ऑर्गेनाइज किया है एंड आई एम श्योर ये काफी मीनिंगफुल और मोटिवेटिंग इम्पैक्ट देगा आई कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट देम फॉर दिस इनिशियटिव यूनिटी और सॉलिडेरिटी ही दो ऑप्शन हैं जिनके सहारे हमें ये टाइम काटना है साथ मिलजुल कर और योगा डे इस साल और भी बड़ा मैसेज लेकर आ रहा है की इस साल अगर आपने अपनी इम्यूनिटी और योग पर फोकस नहीं किया तो आप डेफिनेटली इस डिजीज का टारगेट हो सकते हैं इसीलिए हम सब का पॉजिटिव रहना एक साथ रहना बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है इस क्रूशल टाइम में आप सभी से ये रिक्वेस्ट है कि यूनाइटेड रहें सबका ख्याल रखें मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंटली पॉजिटिव रहें क्योंकि ये एक ऐसा रामबाण है जो हमें एकजुट रख सकता है और सावधानी बरतने में मदद कर सकता है थैंक यू सो मच स्टे सेफ Thank you respected Rima Malhotra ji for demonstrating to us that the end of one journey can be the beginning of another amazing journey. Dear viewers, from the exciting and inspiring world of sports, we now move on the valor and vigor of the Indian Army. Their motto, service before self, creates unity and solidarity as the army infuses deep-rooted values and creates leaders out of every soldier. Our next speaker is one such leader who has willingly faced and overcome a plethora of challenges and difficulties. It is with great privilege that we introduce our next speaker, Honorable Captain Sundar Chand Thakur ji. He is a retired captain of the Indian Army. He is the resident editor of Nav Bharat Times. He is the author of Patthar Pardub and founding director of Mind Fit Initiative for Spiritual and Physical Health Revolution. Even at the age of 52 he is a regular marathon runner. Please welcome him to share a few words. Hello and namaste to everyone who is watching this video. Uh <clears throat> my name is Captain Sundar Chand Thakur as the name suggests I am ex army officer and I am the resident editor of Navara Times. Uh, National Daily Broadsheet Newspaper, based in capital, financial capital of India, Mumbai, which incidentally is the city with the highest number of corona cases. We are fighting it out. We will fight it out. Uh, I am also an avid marathon runner and a yoga enthusiast, learning on my own. I also have a YouTube channel with the name of Mind Fit where I upload uh, videos on uh, mental physical and spiritual upliftment please do check them out i'm sure it has content that can be very useful for uh, students like you so first of all i would like to thank dr chinmaya chinmay pandya ji the provisi of dev sanskriti vishva vidyalaya haridwar for inviting me to this global e conclave and celebrating international yoga day in this grand way the sheer number and uh, 
variety of speakers who are going to express their opinions and and experiences absolutely amaze me i'm sure uh, this event is going to help in spreading awareness about yoga in a great way i am equally amazed to see the way dr chinmay ji is uh, guiding the university to greater heights and a brighter future inculcating the highest set of values amongst the students the theme for this uh, global e conclave is embracing unity and solidarity in covid-19 times talking about this theme i find yoga has become one of the major factors that has brought unity and solidarity among the people throughout the world speaking for my country i have seen how my fellow indians have surrendered to yoga and looked up to it for the source of power and hope during the lockdown period the other day i heard a senior doctor who is treating corona patients explaining in a very interesting way about how people can start living a fearless life in this pandemic she gave an example of a person traveling in a bus with a valid ticket anyone with a valid ticket would not fear the ticket checker obviously the powerful immune system we can build by regular warm water goggles consuming citrus fruits regular physical workout and healthy eating is like a valid ticket if we have that ticket with us then there is no need to fear the ticket checker which is corona virus those who are into yoga know it very well that yoga is actually not limited to just physical movement and stretching but it takes care of our emotional as well as mental health too i know people personally and our newspaper has also published stories about many people who were corona positive but they fought it hard through yoga and pranayama and within a very short span they successfully defeated corona virus there are other perspective to look at covid 19 the world is suffering from this pandemic like never before although there have been much severe and most and more devastating pandemics in the past none of them had an extreme impact on us none affected us the way corona has the reason for this is the transformation that our world has gone through in past two decades globalization does not explain it completely as we have as we have moved much beyond becoming a global village today a country can be very powerful in terms of its economy and political control but it cannot just disconnect itself from the rest of the world wuhan is an example of how incidences occurring in a tiny part can shock the entire world therefore it's time when powerful nations should stop being self centered and rather work towards making the entire world self sufficient those who uh, those who practice yoga must have realized that i speak and i speak from my personal experience that over a period of time yoga practice transforms us to a spiritual being spirituality simply means that a person is no more self centered His Highness Dalai Lama keeps reiterating it time and again that the sign of spirituality in us is our transformed focus from self to others. I personally believe that the good time, good times can divide us, but the suffering always unites us. Since the entire world is suffering like never before. we also feel united like never before in india people have suffered to unimaginable levels we have witnessed pro- probably the most mismanaged and torturing exodus of migrant laborers there are stories about pregnant women 
walking hundreds of kilometers and young mothers holding babies in their laps and pulling them along. Many of these laborers died in road accidents and some other succumbed to their hunger. We have never witnessed such harrowing exodus before. But it is equally soothing to know that people have gone out of their way to help these laborers. If there are painful stories coming out of COVID-19, there are positive stories too about how people are queuing up to lend their helping hands. It is this unity and solidarity for everyone who is suffering from COVID-19 which I consider to be the greatest gain of this corona pandemic. It is said that when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Indeed, the entire world is going through some tough times, but the entire world is fighting through it. COVID-19 has given us the opportunity to spread love and compassion across the globe to our fellow humans. I am very sure that the world will come out of this testing time much stronger and much full of love and compassion. The world needs them more than ever. The COVID-19 has highlighted a few more points about our own abilities that we, nev we never really acknowledged. It made us believe that even when the shopping malls and liquor stores are shut, we can still breathe and sleep through all of it. It may not be the same in other countries, but it was interesting to see how households in India were run without any maids or cooks. The privileged population of India would never have imagined that they would be washing utensils three times a day for such a long, long time period. On a serious note, COVID-19 has taught us to accept life as it comes, but at the same time, it has urged us to keep fighting to make our life better in every possible sense. There are millions of people around the globe who, are, who have suffered enormous losses, losing their business, their jobs they had for decades, losing their very dear and near ones. But amidst this enormous suffering, the human resilience stands like the silver lining. We are determined to face and fight it. The fight against COVID-19 has reinforced to be as to be as courageous as our ancestors were while they sailed through darker and more difficult times. I am sure sooner or later we will defeat the corona pandemic. I am also aware that right now every individual of this world is also suffering psychologically as the stressful pandemic sets many new mental health issues. But in, the, in this very pain and suffering, lies our unity and solidarity as the globe as the global pandemic binds us together to fight against these tough times last but not the least i must request to all students that they should, they must remember the valid ticket thing i told in the beginning keep that ticket with you guys and keep working on your immune system make it strong and then live fearlessly in this corona pandemic times. Have a fearless life. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Captain Sundar Chand Thakurji, for your words of wisdom and insight. Now we are happy to introduce our last speaker for this session. Ms. Suma Sharma, her life and coaching journey greatly exemplifies extraordinary commitment and hard work. Ms. Sharma's passion for cricket manifested into her dedication to serve as a mentor, leader, and coach for women. She is an inspiration. She is the head coach of the Kerala women's team at Kerala Cricket Association. She served as fielding coach of the Indian women's cricket team. She has conducted the National Cricket Academy camps and guided young and timid set of Kerala girls to win their first ever national title across men's and women's cricket in 2018. And lastly, she has dedicated her coaching with the intent of transforming the things that she has learned for future women players.
please welcome Ms. Sharma to share a few words. I would like to convey my sincere greetings to Honorable Dr. Chinmay Pandya Ji, DSVV family and all organizers, distinguished speakers of this world class e-conclave. Dosto, unfortunately, hum aise daur se guzar rahe hain jahan unity aur solidarity ki sakt zarurat hai, par uski kabhi zarur mehsoos ho rahi hai. Aise mushkil ke samay mein jahan logo ki naukariyan ja rahi hain, बिजनेस ठप हो रहे हैं लोगों को बिना काम के घर पर बैठना पड़ रहा है जिसकी वजह से डिप्रेशन और एंजाइटी के केसेस बढ़ रहे हैं मजदूरों और खेती और किसानों की जिंदगी में मुश्किल आ पड़ी है ऐसा नहीं कि ये परेशानियां हमारे देश में ही आई हैं ये विश्व व्यापक परेशानी है इस संकट की घड़ी में सब देशों को एकजुट होकर लड़ना जरूरी है जिससे कि हम ह्यूमैनिटी को बचा सके मैं इस ई कॉन्क्लेव के माध्यम से पूरे विश्व को निवेदन करना चाहती हूँ कि अपने छोटे हितों को छोड़कर मानवता को बचाने के लिए एक साथ मिलकर काम करें और इस कोरोना वायरस से पूरे विश्व को बचा सकें थैंक यू सो मच Thank you, Ms. Sharma, for your time and encouraging words. While many of the speakers today come from a similar background, each one has been able to capture their own unique lived experience. We are privileged to have them all here in celebration of International Yoga Day, and we hope that you will embrace the insightful words they have shared with us. Dev Sanskriti Vishya Vidyalay and All World Gayatri Parivar is incredibly honored to host this celebration. It is our intent that sessions like these we can spread the message of global solidarity regardless of the turbulent circumstances that we find ourselves in. This concludes our first session of day 2 of DSUV's Global E-Conclave. Thank you everyone for joining us and stay tuned for the second session at 6 p.m. Indian Standard Time.